Ah, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord, guys. I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful Thursday. Uh, snow in Colorado. Uh, it's really cold. Um, so um, we're going to have a real cold weekend, too. It's going to be cold, like, tomorrow, Friday. Um, minus 18 degree temperatures Saturday, Sunday, Monday snow again. So we are really having a cold, cold time uh, in Colorado right now. I wanted to go down and be with a family member uh, before they take off and go back to California. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so uh, we just having a lot of cold weather right now. So uh, we just thank you guys though for being here. Uh, today's video is going to be really, 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 really awesome. I think awesome. Uh, God is working with his people, working with his church, working with his people, his, his people who are special to him, who really uh, trust in and believe in him. Uh, so we're going to be focusing on uh, some material coming from Jim Staley today. And I really uh, love his material. It was a video he did uh, coming back from uh, the new year. Uh, I'm going to be letting him talk to you on that. And then he got another new video he just put out today where he got a revelation while he was in prayer. So I'm going to be playing that today as well. Some of it is a real like 40 minutes or something. So I'm not going to play the whole thing, but a little bit of that as well. And then we're going to get into the news. Uh, I think uh, Lewis in Florida had a little news clip and I want to share. A lot of deceptions are going on. So I know uh, Prophecy with Stan has got one out about the deceptions. And I'm not going to probably be able to cover a lot of it either because of Jim Steele and material. But, and I have a testimony I want to share with you guys. Because the other night I was praying, I was asking the Lord about my life, my condition, the things I've been through in my life with him and what he thought about me, what he thought about me. And I'm just saying, you know, we need to go to the father and talk to him about our conditions. And we need to know that he can do anything for you. He can heal you, deliver you. Uh, man, he can give you revelation dreams. He could just uh, change your whole mind, you know, mind and thoughts about things you used to think about and do. Uh, you know, he could do anything and everything, but we don't want to believe. A lot of us don't want to believe in God. We don't want to believe in what he can do. But I'm telling you, I'm a testimony today that he can do all things. And you know, that's why my, I, I have my book out. Uh, that's why I wrote the book about my miracles and my life. And this is just touching the little surfaces of the miracles. But I know he do miracles in my life all the time. Uh, this is coming from the time I was 16 up to I was in my 60s. And now I'm in my 70s. And I'm, stay, I'm saying he's still doing miracles. Still doing mighty miracles. Uh, I think I heard someone this week say, oh, well, do God do miracles? Uh, all the countries have miracles. Well, you know, miracles are going on all over the world. Uh, just because you're not there to see them happening, they are happening, guys. A lot of people who believe in Yeshua Messiah, they are having miracles in their life in this day and age that we are living in, okay? So don't let nobody fool you, okay? Because we are having miracles. Uh, and so we're going to be uh, getting into, um, if you go in my book, uh, you can write me for the uh, cover, uh, the hard copy uh, at marner.camel at gmail.com. And you also, you can go and get the ebook, which is only $2.99, uh, from Amazon.com, Google, Google, Kobo, Lulu, and Bonza Noble. And also, the link is on the screen. Uh, he did what? Quotation marks are necessary if you go there at the Google Play Store. Uh, also, you can search by ISBN. Uh, download all our ebooks from fmcmi.org. Okay. Uh, also, so click subscribe, the like bell, subscribe to our YouTube channel, click the notification bell. Uh, a lot of people are subscribing on, on my uh, Rumble and other social media sites. So I think I got more people watching the channels on there than on YouTube now. So, but anyway, you can subscribe and you can go to the other channels as well. Uh, and also, uh, Title 17, uh, disclaimer, it's in front of you. And I don't even like I skipped the fair use notice, okay? Uh, but anyway, guys, uh, please understand that the times we're living in are very serious times. Uh, I have a song here I'm going to play today that my one of my favorite songs. 
I sing this song almost every single day when I'm praying in the morning. And another song coming from Karen Davis. She sang this song, Who is like you, O oh Lord? Who is like you? Oh, nobody's like him. We could just only get that in our head and mind and soul that nobody's like him. He is the great judge. He is the one that know you and know all about you, know where you live, know where you stay. And today we're going to go over some of that stuff, how people uh, grow up in their life. And, you know, and a lot of people, uh, I'll say human beings, they want to judge other people. But you don't know what other people have gone through. You don't know what other people are doing. You don't know uh, who their mom and dad were. You don't know how they came up in life. You have no idea. But you sure know who we are. And he can change and he can do anything for you everything for you if we will just trust and believe he said it's to those that believe that the miracles happen okay so uh we're gonna go ahead and play this song right now and i love it so very much so very much so let me go ahead and play it right now and mute it out <clears throat>
TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel rejects a Qatari proposal that would end the war absent the destruction of Hamas. Germany asserts the need to expand Unifil's access to all parts of southern Lebanon. The International Court of Justice holds a first hearing of two in South Africa's case against Israel over allegations of genocide. The Israeli War Cabinet held a meeting last night to discuss a new proposal for a deal to release the remaining 136 Israeli hostages from Hamas captivity. The Qatari draft proposal included three primary provisions, the release of all hostages in a number of stages, an immediate end to the war, which would also include the IDF withdrawing from the Gaza Strip in exchange for the exile of Hamas leaders from the Gaza Strip. However, during the extensive deliberations, it was revealed that the Qatari proposal was not coordinated with the leadership of Hamas in Gaza, and according to a circulating report that TV7 could not immediately corroborate, the Qatari Prime Minister subsequently informed Secretary of State Antony Blinken that exiling Hamas leaders from Gaza was unattainable. Irrespective of the Islamist position, Israel rejected outright any proposal that would require an end to the war without reaching its core objectives. Meanwhile, IDF spokesman Rear Admiral Daniel Agari stressed during his daily briefing that Israel remains committed to obtain the release of the 136 hostages in Hamas captivity. 136 hostages, including dozens of sick and injured without medical treatment, are still being held in Gaza. These include elders over 80, children, and women being held hostage without protection by the cruel Hamas terrorists. We are concerned for their physical and mental well-being. We continue to act decisively above and below ground in Khan Yunus. Our forces located a tunnel there, where hostages were kept in harsh conditions underground. Today, we brought in journalists from the foreign press to expose to the world the crimes against humanity that Hamas commits. We continue to make every effort to return all the hostages. Admiral Hagari further revealed that IDF Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Helzi Alevi had visited the Gaza Strip, during the course of which the regrettable incident in which six IDF troops were killed in central Gaza earlier this week was the focus of discussions. The chief of the general staff visited the Burij area in central Gaza today, where he was presented with the initial inquiry into the explosion that occurred at the beginning of the week, in which six soldiers were killed and others were injured. The chief of general staff noted that the mission is very complex, and we have the duty to thoroughly learn from this event and pass on the lessons learned to all the forces in Gaza. We must continue the effort to destroy Hamas underground terrorist infrastructure. While visiting the IDF troops in the battlefield, General Halevi also highlighted the preparedness of the IDF's ground forces to contend with the Hezbollah-plagued southern Lebanon in the event of a war breaking out. After what you did in Gaza, there is no village in Lebanon that you can't enter and dismantle. We will deploy you where needed and you will do what needs to be done. It's a long war. On the other end, we shall mark successful results. While the IDF is preparing for prospects of the war widening into Lebanon, Admiral Hagari pointed to the continued cross-border hostilities, which Iran's proxy Hezbollah has instigated, drawing retaliatory strikes against terror infrastructures throughout the southern regions of Lebanese territory. Today, in the north, we struck Hezbollah terrorist infrastructure throughout southern Lebanon. We also struck a terrorist cell in the area of Kfarkila. Throughout the day, several launches towards Israeli territory were identified, and IDF forces responded with fire to every launch and to every shooting into our territory. During the night, we eliminated, from the air, a terrorist near the border in the Hardav area, who was involved in advancing several terrorist attacks. We will continue to act decisively with the goal of harming anyone who harms the state of Israel, and we will continue to act decisively to distance Hezbollah away from our border. 
Meanwhile in Lebanon, German Foreign Minister Annalena Bayerbock, after visiting Israel, arrived in Beirut where she met with German forces operating in the country as part of UNIFIL, which is the acronym for the United Nations Interim Force in Lebanon. Die Umsetzung der Resolution 1701. I made clear in Israel, but also in Lebanon, that we are doing everything we can to implement UN Resolution 1701, which would enable people in the south of Lebanon and people in the north of Israel living in peace and security. We need a de-escalation from all sides. Hezbollah must withdraw from the blue line. The war in Gaza against Hamas must not be used as a pretext to open up one more front line and to provoke a regional war. The UN's UNIFIL mission, which is meant to secure this peace, must finally be granted access to the entire region along the Blue Line. Berlin's top diplomat further highlighted the crucial need to reform the corrupt institutions in Lebanon, which effectively brought the country to near collapse. Without these reforms, without these financial reforms, we are in a situation where the security too is weakened. As I just heard in my talks here, soldiers are sometimes not getting their wages and if these soldiers are being asked to contribute towards the fight against terrorism, that is hardly possible. So in order to strengthen security here in Lebanon, there must also be a political brief. That was part of my discussions with the Prime Minister. Turning to the city of The Hague in the Netherlands, where the International Court of Justice heard the first hearing of two in South Africa's case against Israel over allegations of genocide this morning. For over three hours and 20 minutes, South Africa's legal team presented the ICJ with a long list of accusations pertaining to genocide, basing their allegations on legal rulings by courts of totalitarian regimes such as Qatar, among other institutions of diminished repute. Nevertheless, according to a Dutch professor of international law at the University of Leiden, the multiple arguments put forth by South Africa may possibly trigger the court to action. So South Africa makes multiple arguments. Firstly, it makes the argument that Israel is currently committing a genocide, but then it also makes other arguments, because that first argument will be quite difficult, uh, not necessarily impossible, but it will be difficult to prove. But then South Africa also says that Israel is violating its obligation to prevent genocide. And there, the threshold is already lower, because there you do not need to prove that genocide is being committed, but that there is a real risk of genocide, and that the escalation that we see might lead to genocide. Then South Africa is also making a case that there is incitement to commit genocide and it refers to uh, extremist statements that have been uttered by, by several leaders, political leaders, military leaders of Israel. And it also claims that uh, Israel is doing not uh, insufficient, not enough to punish uh, acts of genocide that are being uh, committed or this incitement to commit genocide. Yes, so the ICJ has uh, discretion into what kind of uh, provisional measure it imposes. It does not necessarily have to follow those precisely asked by uh, South Africa. So it could also opt um, to order Israel to impose, to, to um, have a, a humanitarian ceasefire. Uh, and in addition to that, South Africa has also requested for other kinds of provisional measures, such as uh, the obligation for Israel to do what it can to make sure that the Palestinians have access to food, to water, to humanitarian assistance, to medical assistance. Uh, so it's, it may be likely that the court also I issues those kinds of uh, orders and possibly also that it orders Israel not to do anything that may aggravate the situation. It is important to explain that while rulings by the International Court of Justice are binding, the only body that has the capacity of ensuring enforcement of the rulings is no other than the UN Security Council where the five permanent members, including the United States, France and Britain, alongside China and Russia, maintain the power to veto any and all resolutions. Meanwhile, ahead of today's opening proceedings against Israel at the ICJ, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu released a film statement highlighting Israel's intentions vis-à-vis -vis the Gaza Strip. I want to make a few points absolutely clear. 
Israel has no intention of permanently occupying Gaza or displacing its civilian population. Israel is fighting Hamas terrorists, not the Palestinian population. And we are doing so in full compliance with international law. The IDF is doing its utmost to minimize civilian casualties, while Hamas is doing its utmost to maximize them by using Palestinian civilians as human shields. The IDF urges Palestinian civilians to leave war zones by disseminating leaflets, making phone calls, providing safe passage corridors, while Hamas prevents Palestinians from leaving at gunpoint and often with gunfire. Our goal is to rid Gaza of Hamas terrorists and free our hostages. Once this is achieved, Gaza can be demilitarized and de-radicalized, thereby creating a possibility for a better future for Israel and Palestinians alike. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I'd like to encourage you, pray for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. Moreover, it is important to highlight that TV7 Israel is a donation-based nonprofit ministry with all of our productions available free of charge. Therefore, if you're blessed by our daily updates and would like to help us bear the costs, please consider making a donation. You can do so by visiting our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. I'm Jonathan Hessen, wishing you an Erev Mevorach, and God willing, we'll see you during our upcoming TV7 Israel updates. Until then, Shalom from Jerusalem. Lewis and God bless every single one of you. Today is January 11, 2024, and welcome to the Grand Supreme News Channel. All right, guys, so we have some urgent information coming out. If you can, please share the video. And it says here ISR orders facility to be ready to receive thousands of wounded. Thousands. And uh, when I say facility, I'm talking about this here, guys. I'm not going to say the name. Just follow me on this one, all right? So uh, let me just read this part really quick here. Let me just scroll down here really quick. So it says here, these facilities, you have multiple ones. And by the way, these facilities are in the northern part, all right, uh, between ISR and Lebanon, all right? So these multiple facilities started preparing for what has been uh, described as a uh, desert island situation, meaning days without equipment, days without medicines, days without food in the event of a massive biblical war. We're going to see what's going on in this one here, guys. Once again, ISR are telling multiple facility you better get ready. All right, guys, before I start, give this video a big thumbs up. Okay, guys, I have some things I want to talk about because, I, as I'm saying, I'm not showing much news here today because I have uh, Jim Staley a material I definitely want to share with you guys. Hopefully, I can share some uh, prophecy with Stan, uh, information on deceptions. But I do want to share uh, uh, his uh, material uh, he had a, uh, a one new out today. I think I'm going to play that one first. Uh, but this one uh, uh, relating to the new year, uh, I want to play it when I get into my testimony that I had here this week. Uh, and so I'm going to be talking about that a little bit. I do know that this one is out. I was going to, I was reading about this today. Uh, Denver has one of the biggest homeless populations in the nation. A lot of things going on in Denver and my state, in my state. Uh, a lot of people uh, just uh, don't have nowhere to go. Uh, I think I read about a, a nursing home that they uh, was shutting down because of some kind of something going on with it. I don't even know how to use these words. I'm, uh, you know, when you get trouble with sometimes nursing homes and they, uh, the people don't have nowhere to go. And it's just a lot going on in Colorado with homeless conditions. Uh, so be praying for Colorado. but. I do want to get into uh, letting you know about the Antichrist and the World Highway Vision uh, from uh, Vicky um, uh, video. 
And then also I want to, I'll be putting these in the description box. Uh, uh, just want you guys to know. I know that um, my friend here, uh, she have a video out, Rain 333 about the weather. I think I'm going to play that one right now about the weather. And then after that, I'm going to get into here, uh, my friend here, Jim Staley. I used to write Jim Staley when he was in prison. I, I used to write him letters. He used to write me back. It was amazing uh, talking to him in prison when he was in prison. Uh, but now he's out of prison, and I, I hadn't really been in touch with him lately. So I saw some material that I want to share with you guys. So I'm going to be definite uh, sharing two of his videos today, uh, a little bit of each one of them. Uh, so we'll get into missions later. And, uh, and also, this is out too on End Times Myster Mysteries. Uh, everybody's on this subject here. Everybody's talking about this subject matter. Uh, so I will put this in the description box. Uh, and also her, you know, uh, Vicki, uh, her uh, vision that she had about it as well. And so uh, a lot of material here, but I can't get into all of them today because I do want to get into a little bit of this one later, The Greatest Deceptions of the Tribulation. And I'm probably not going to be able to do but like one of them, okay? Because I don't know. I know that uh, this guy have a lot to talk about. And this is a 43-minute video, but I'm not going to play but a little portion of it. And the other video I will be playing because it's talking about uh, some things that I was dealing with in my own life here. And I want to bring it up here, what God showed me this week, okay? So we'll be doing both of his videos, uh, you know, touching base on all part of it part of his video this particular one i may try to do the whole video but the other one i'm gonna do part of it that he did today okay just want you to understand so let me go ahead now and get into uh latter rain 333 little message about the weather and then we'll get over to jim staley so let me go ahead and mute this out again with latter rain 333 thank you for coming back to this channel to hear the things that the Lord has been showing me through words and dreams, messages, and warnings. Today, the Lord gave me a message while I was praying on November, I think it was either the 29th or 30th of last year, 2023, and it's concerning the weather. In the last few months, the Lord has been giving me quite a few things concerning the weather changes that are going to be coming. And... This is one more message that he wanted me to bring to you. The, me the main message is that the Lord is in control of the weather, even though you are hearing otherwise from other sources. He uses the weather, the Lord uses the weather for many purposes. And sometimes it is just to get people's attention that there is a God that's larger than what we realize or think of. Other times it is a reminder that our destiny is not our own and that is the Lord that holds the keys to our lives. You know, he is our creator. He knows the days of our birth and he also knows as well as the day that we are going to die. It is in his hands. He has the key to life and death. I couldn't lose any weight no matter what I tried, but I couldn't figure out why. Now, many times the Lord also will bring weather changes or disasters to pour out his judgments. And we see this in the scriptures. He allows these changes, though the enemy will come and cover it up with false excuses. So while God is showing his power, Satan comes, like he always does, and tries to cover it up. He tries to cover up uh, God's ways. He doesn't want people to know that there is even a God. He tries to hide our Lord's ways. He tries to deceive the people into thinking that there is no God. Or, in today's world, that there are only really the gods of science and tech or technology. He tries also to get other people to think that things are just random, that they happen for no reason or for no purpose, but it couldn't be further from the truth. We know that the, that the devil, we know he is a liar. 
because he come he is from the father of lies he is the father of lies and he does his best to bring these deceptions upon the people and tries to cover up God's ways you know the great I am the almighty God he is the one who controls man's destiny it is not random it is the great I am the almighty God that brings curses as well as blessings. What is done in the spiritual realm will then manifest itself in the physical, though very few people understand this concept. True reality is found in the spirit and not in the physical. When the devil comes to try to hide the hand of God, this is what he does. He tries to come and hide the hand of God for, and he uses it for his own wicked excuses so that a delusion will fall upon the people because his desire is to deceive as many people as possible, including Christians. He especially actually goes after the Christians even more with his lies and deceptions because those, those people who already are his, he doesn't have to do a whole lot of work on them. So he kind of just goes after the Christians. So it actually takes the eyes of wisdom. It takes the spirits and the gifts of discernment. I pray every day that the Lord would give me the gift of discernment and, and that he would give me discernment so I won't be deceived. We need to pray to the Lord to receive this. This is important, of utmost important for my brothers and sisters to understand how important it is right now that we ask for the gift of discernment because of the last days that we are in. We are seeing the last days unfold before our very eyes, brothers and sisters, and we need discernment spiritually and in all things. Before I read the message that I received from the Lord, I just wanted to say one more reminder, and that is God is greater. God is more powerful than anything else in the universe. He actually laughs at Satan's feeble attempts to hijack his God's ultimate plans and purposes. I love what it says in 1 John 4.4. 4. It says this, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now let me go ahead now and read this short message that I received. This is what I heard. Weather change or climate change is just a cover up for what I will allow with the weather. They blame it on mankind, but it is from my hand as I pour out judgments. My great foe comes to hide my ways and to deceive the people into thinking that there is no God and that all things are random. But no, he is a liar from the pits of hell that deceive the masses. He is the Pied Piper leading them down the path to their destruction. While man has polluted my earth with their sinful ways and practices, it is only I that allow or permit any destruction to come. It is by my will that the oceans will roar that the earth will shake, that the meteors will crash down, that the floods will come, or that the fires will burn. These are the judgments that come upon the earth to purify it of all unrighteousness. For judgment come, for with judgment comes righteousness. It takes eyes of wisdom, discernment to see clearly the wiles of Satan as well as man. Use this discernment carefully in order to have crystal clear vision. Events are coming, known and unknown to mankind. Some of these things have never been seen before, but I will allow. Know that I still hold together the very fabric of the world, for I am its creator, and my creation will answer to me for all the deeds that they have done, whether good or evil. Everyone must give an account for their life. For no one will escape doing so. However, the ones who have believed in their heart that Jesus is Lord will be given immunity. Okay, so that was the end of that message. And then a few days later, brothers and sisters, I heard this. 
I heard this. I heard, the enemy wants to hide the great moves of God by hijacking them as his own. For example, the signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars will be and explained scientifically by removing any real reason for their existence and by removing the knowledge of who actually created them. God is being written out of all narratives upon the earth as Satan blocks and removes all acknowledgments of God's power upon the world. In reality, it is God who, al who allows all changes to come, for he is the author of all things, and in him, in Everything has its being. And I'll say that again. In reality, it is God who allows all changes to come. It is He, the author of all things, and in Him, everything has its being. And that was the end of the second short message that I received from the Lord. So, I wanted to end with this. First, uh, I do have a copy of this, a transcript of this message, and it is in my blog, and it's down below in the description box. Please go check it out because it will also have some corresponding scriptures I put in there, some scriptures about that it is God who controls the weather. So there's scripture and verses about that. So like I said, please go check out my blog. And then I wanted to end with this. For those of you who do not know this free gift of salvation that Jesus brings, you can receive it now by believing in your heart that Jesus died for your sins and confess it with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. Romans 10, 9 through 11. Hello everyone. I wanted to go live here. been very reluctant to do so for several minutes now, probably 20 minutes, uh, 32 to be exact. I just uh, came out of two hours of extraordinarily intense prayer. As a matter of fact, my, uh, my throat is, is almost shot. But I wanted to share with you what I saw in the spirit as I prayed. And first of all, I, I wanna just say that I have never in my life, I don't recall ever praying like this. Something has happened um, I, I, I can't even begin to explain it, but something is happening in the earth realm that has been unleashed from heaven. A call has gone out that I believe is going to shake the church of God to its core. And there are going to be things that are going to be resurrected from the from the grave like Lazarus. And so I want to share with you some of the things that God showed me as I was praying, and I, I, again, I, I don't think I have ever prayed for, for two straight hours at the top of my lungs nonstop, like almost without taking a breath. It was as if God just like took my body over and just prayed things through me that I could not have possibly known or understood. And this comes after, uh, you know, ironically, last week when I was teaching these Indian pastors, 25 to 30 Indian pastors, uh, I went live with, with an, another prophetic word from the Lord. And in this time, like, it was so powerful, this time with these pastors. And at, at the end, it was so overwhelming. I, I, I told the translator to just stop translating and need to pray over you guys. And I just prayed. And... Um, and so in any case, in this prayer, one of the things that I saw um, was I saw the, the, the fountains of the deep opening, uh, like there was bubbling at the bottom of the ocean floor, and it was this hot air, uh, like lava steam that was coming out, but nobody could see it at the surface. It was only in the deep that, that this was known. It had not manifested itself. <clears throat> and, um, and so there's something coming uh, from the deep. At the same time, uh, I saw um, God begin to call out earthquakes, uh, a, a shaking of the earth. And I want to tell you right off the bat that I don't know if it's in the physical, but I know for sure it's in the spiritual. There is a spiritual shaking that is happening right now amongst God's people that is overwhelming uh, in the kingdom realm. 
and there is a fight in the demonic realm. And, and I, 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 this is just so hard. Um, my throat hurts so bad, but I'm going to try my best. The reason why I'm telling you this, by the way, and this might sound discombobulated, but just hold on because I believe that if, if, if whoever's supposed to see this is supposed to see this. But there is, there is a call that's going out that is releasing ancient things. And I saw one of the most incredible things I, have, I saw in these two hours of being in the spirit is I saw stalls, gates opening with horses that were bred for war, that had been groomed for war, uh, incredibly muscular giant horses. And they were assigned to individual kings of the earth. And these kings did not know who these horses were. The horses, uh, the, but the horses knew their riders and they've been held back for millennia from their, from their riders. And there's been no one righteous enough. And the timing has not been right. I saw in the spirit. And so these horses were held back from their riders. And God says, now is the time and today is the day where the riders will meet their horses for the first time. And, and the beginning of that merging is going to happen. And I, and I, I heard Yeshua say, I am the King of Kings. Where are my Kings? Let my Kings of the earth arise. And I saw, uh, Kings raising almost as if from the dead. Now this is all in the spirit, but these Kings were raising up all over the globe and they didn't know that they were Kings. They didn't know. But God uh, is calling them and he's going to raise them up in influence. And I also saw that those who had great influence in the kingdom. Whoa, man, I'm getting the chills just saying this again. Th those that had great influence uh, were going to be pulled down. Some of them were going to be pulled down because there was a judgment that's going to happen in the household of God. There's a, those that had great influence, pull down the ones that are really not his true kings, really not the, the true shepherds are going to be pulled down. And then men that no one knows are going to come out of nowhere and have tremendous influence. The kings will be given their crowns and they're going to meet their horses. And uh, in that moment, there is the, the battle is going to begin. And, and there is going to be a turning over. Uh, I saw a turning over of a tide where God's people have been crying foul and the end is near and the evil is prevalent. And God says, those people are the ones that know not my ways. God says that in the last several years, he's been allowing evil to grow, to expose what he's been seeing all along for the purpose of pushing back and expunging. God says, I'm exposing to expunge. My people have interpreted the exposing as the end. And God says, no, 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 no. This is only the beginning of the war. The war to end all wars is coming. But God says, no, this is Gideon's moment. This is where the horses meet the rider and the kings he's going to gather at a round table that is going to overthrow the council of Nicaea that was in 325 AD. 1700 years later is 2025. God says by the end of this year, I am going to overthrow the council of Nicaea. And there is going to be a new council. There is going to be the knights of the round table. And as God, as King Arthur, is going to reinstitute the kings of the round table at his table. And he's going to call them to meet. Uh, I saw uh, Satan uh, and his minions for long, many years, have been preventing the kings from, from knowing each other, keeping them away from each other. Uh, for the purpose of, of he understands covenant synergy. I saw covenant synergy in the earth realm that he's been preventing because individual anointings are like links of a chain. 
as long as the links do not connect, the chain has no strength. It doesn't even exist and a link does nothing. But I saw boa constrictors that were holding people and constricting them. I saw them lose their strength and like chains fell to the ground and people just walked away uh, from what was binding them. Uh, God gave a prophetic word that there, there were there were His people that that had great difficulties in in um, in the spirit, great difficulties of being connected to sin. What, what here's what I saw. I, I saw a God uh, spoke a word that what was struggling yesterday, people will wake up tomorrow and not have anywhere near. The struggle. They won't even understand it. Something that they've been fighting for years, they will lose the taste for in a moment. And they won't even know why. As a matter of fact, God said that, that the habit would be there and they would, they would find themselves in the same situations and bad habits, but the desire won't be there anymore. And so God was declaring that there were chains and boa constrictors a python spirit is being defeated. There has been a, an, a, a a head of the snake has been cut. And then I saw as an ax went through the head of the snake. Now, this is strange. You, you got to just follow with me because this is like Narnia stuff that 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 the ax head went through the snake's head and it cut a tree down at the same time. There was an entire tree that was cut down along with the snake. I'm like, I'm so dumb. I didn't even think about it. The serpent in the garden in a tree, knowledge of good and evil. Okay, so I'm a little slow, but in this vision through prayer, because it was intense, I didn't catch it till just now, but, but he was cutting the serpent down and the tree of knowledge of good and evil simultaneously inside the church. And there's a shift, massive shift. Uh, God spoke uh, to me during uh, the time of Sukkot that there was a birthing that was going to come happen in this year, a new birthing that was going to happen. I'm still unsure of what that birthing is, but I, I'm seeing that there is a new spirit that's going to be coming out uh, in, into his, uh, his ecclesia, and the kings are going to rise, and there's going to be leaders of myriads that are going to come, and there's going to be connections uh, that, that's going to happen. Uh, I, there was a real strong uh, focus on wine, new wine, that was going to be uh, released, uh, that he had been, been preparing vessels to hold this wine. Man, I am freezing in my own studio right now. I, uh, this is crazy. Anytime that happens, it typically is Holy Spirit. Uh, but the, I saw... Um, uh, he spoke and said that there were vessels that have been prepared for decades that have been really struggling, having no idea what they were struggling against was covenant. And that he was preparing these, these, these wine skins for a new wine that's coming. And I saw this new wine being poured so much that the wine skins were, it, it were just, just taking it. Like, like the wine skin was this big, okay? But the wine was just, thousands of gallons and the wine skids just, they've been prepared for so long that the wine skids just kept stretching, kept stretching, kept stretching, kept taking, like they were just like empty vessels that said, God, just keep coming, keep pouring, keep taking. I want it in. I want all of it. I want all of it. I want all of it. And they just kept taking. And the ones that kept uh, covenant, the ones that were open, he just kept pouring this new wine in. And so I want, I, I, I what else, Father, do you want me to say that, that I saw? Uh, uh, earthquakes. Uh, there was something about uh, the, a cast against San Francisco for uh, being the seed of the serpent for uh, the homosexual agenda uh, around the globe. There was a call out for Disney to be bankrupt. That Disney uh, left. Uh, the, the, that some, I don't even know if this is even a thing, uh, but but God called it out in the earth realm that that that, that God originally gave. Uh, a blessing uh, to Walt Disney, um, and uh, and that seed has been turned into a serpent's agenda, and God called out bankruptcy uh, f for that company, um, for their for their unholy uh, breach of the covenant of blessing. See, God blesses companies, and, and when they stay in covenant, He blesses them, and when they doesn't, uh, he, he 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 overturns even the greatest of Babylon's will fall. Uh, there was a call out for that. And um, let's see, what else, Father, was there? 
the San Andreas fault line, if I mentioned that, uh, there, there was a, f a call for friction uh, of fault lines uh, to, to, to tear away territories. Again, this is all in the spirit. I don't know if anything will happen in the physical, but it was all in the spirit. After I uh, finished and I sat here, um, the Lord gave me some, ver some scriptures and I, I, I'd never, I, mean, I have no idea what these scriptures meant, but I went there and, and couldn't believe what I was reading. So I'm going to read these for you. I think it'll bless you. God was just validating these words. Um, and, and out of it, uh, the first one was Hosea chapter 2, and it was verse 22. And I literally had to laugh out loud because I, I just got done uh, uh, prophesying this and praying this. And God was showing me this in the spirit. And, and, and he takes me to... Uh, uh, I didn't even catch it till now. Hosea 2.22. That's my number. Uh, 2.22. I am so tired. I'm not even catching these God winks at all. But Hosea 2.22 says, The earth shall answer with grain and with new wine and with oil they shall answer Jezreel. Then I will sow her, verse 23, for myself in the earth, and I will have mercy on her who had not obtained mercy. Then I will say to those who were not my people, you are my people, and they shall say, you are my God. This is the epitome of the prophetic call out to the northern house of Israel that have been in an abominations. And God says, now is the time you're going to be my people. I'm going to pour out my new wine. And uh, I thought that was absolutely amazing. And then the next scripture that God brought me to, um, again, I had no idea what these were when Okay, guys, so it's so exciting, so exciting. And Yeshua is talking to his people. I'm telling you, I have the testimony coming up here in a bit. And I'm going to let Jim Staley get into his other video that he uh, came out with on the new year. And uh, it's already here. I'm already at um, uh, 51 minutes. So I'm going to try to play much of it as I can, but uh, I'm going to get into that. And if I don't get into uh, the deceptions by uh, uh, Prophecy with Standard Day, I will post it in the description box. I'll come back on another video and go over some of those. But I'm going to try to get into Staley because that's what uh, he's been really uh, got me going. Because the other night I, he was talking about something in this other video. And so I went and talked to the Lord about my condition, what he wanted me to do for this year, uh, anything special, whatever. And then I asked him a question about my life, and I, that's what blew me away, and uh, how he wants his people to rise up. Stop letting people tell you you are doomed. You are doomed. You are hopeless. You know, we, you, you don't need to let the devil tell you you are hopeless because he has no future. And if you are in a sin condition in your life, you need to give it up. Stop sinning. Just stop. And Yeshua will help you to stop. And I was going to uh, talk about that here in a bit, more about it. Like I say, nobody know uh, you but the Father. He know what you're going through. He know what family you were born into. He know everything about you. So, And he want all his children to go to heaven if possible, if possible, guys. This is your opportunity to give your life to Messiah. It's no excuses any longer. You heard what Jim Staley just said. God was going to open up the northern country and have the people, it's time for them to come in now. That they, they will be his people and he will be their God. God want his children. He want his children. So if you're going to uh, sit back and listen to people telling you, oh, well, you're not worthy enough. You have sinned too much and you have done this and you have done that. It's time to know that he have grace. He is the judge. He is the judge. You know, I just went to a, a, a went through a thing with my family member, and I had to speak up to a judge. And if I if I wouldn't have spoke up to this judge and had a lot of people praying at the time, a lot of people praying at the time, and uh, and I tell you, if I wouldn't have spoke up to the judge for her case to be dismissed, I don't know what could have happened. But the Holy Spirit was telling me, you need to speak up. And so you know, I'm telling you now, guys, it's time for you to speak up. To the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Judge of all Judges, and He will help you. 
get ready for his trumpet sound because he wants his children to be there, all his children to be there. And whatever sin condition you have in your life, you need to give it up. You need to go to him because he knows more about it than anybody else. Stop trying to sit around and say, well, oh, I don't need to tell God nothing because God know it already. Well, he wants you to tell him what it is. He said for those who confess their sins, he is faithful to forgive you from all unrighteousness. So, you know, it's time for you to speak up to the right judge. The right judge. The judges of the earth are different judges from the judge of of the kingdom who rule everything, who know everything, who made everything, who made everybody, who made all living things. It's time for you to speak up to him. If you really, really letting the devil beat you up, beat you up, tell you, oh, you have done nothing. You can't be God going to leave you. Oh, you're going to hell. You're going to burn in living fire. You need to just go to the judge while you have breath. Have you have breath to talk, breath to speak. You need to go to the judge, the judge who made all things, the judge who can change his mind, the judge who can help you, the judge who can tell you. And so I'm going to tell you what he told me here in a bit. But we're going to go on over here now and listen to Jim Staley a little bit. And I'm going to tell you what he told me. Uh, I think after I'm going a little bit before uh, the Bible today, we're going to get in the Bible and I'm going to show you what he showed me. And then we're going to do missions after that today and get into Maranatha. I'm going to do it a little different today. Okay. But let me go on over here now and show you, uh, read here. I mean, go to Jim Staley again and then get into the Bible and show you what he showed me. Okay. I'm telling you guys, we are so loved by him. He loved us so much. I'm telling you, uh, he, he, he loved you so much. You have no idea. So, uh, let me go on here and now and uh, meet. Hello everyone, Jim Staley here, Passion for Truth Ministries, and I'm just going to get right into it. I, I have been feeling for the last 30 minutes a strong pull from the Holy Spirit to go live. I have no idea what I'm about to say. I have no idea what God is doing, but my heart is about to beat out of my chest. I know that I just got off a, a live uh, training session with 25 to 30 pastors in India that I do every Wednesday night. And something stirred me when I came to this verse. And I believe that God wants to do something extraordinary in this message. I believe that what's going to come out of this message here in the next few minutes is going to be a prophetic message for 2024 and for the Hebrew 5784. I believe the Father wants to speak deeply into your life. And I believe that prophetically as a whole, his church needs to come out of slavery. They need to come out of bondage. And we need to get back to, to what God really trues us, tr truly desires for us to be, which is what? free. So I'm going to read to you uh, what one of the pastors uh, from India asked me a question about Galatians chapter 2, and uh, and this is where this is coming from. Again, I have no idea what I'm about to say, but I feel a fire of God inside of me that is about to explode. He asked me a question about uh, Galatians chapter 4, verse 27, and it says this, For it is written, Rejoice, O barren, you who do not bear. Break forth and shout, you who are not in labor. For the desolate has many more children than she who has a husband. He read the verse, and then I asked him, what's the question? I'm, I'm, I'm the teacher. You're the student. What's the question? And the question was, was very bizarre. I wasn't expecting this question, which was, how do we apply this verse for today? Now, I've been asked a lot of questions over the last 20 years, but I have never been asked, how do we apply Galatians 4.27 to our lives? And so in the answer, I didn't expect, but the answer on the literal level, the Peshat level was that those who, the one who is barren represents Sarah. She was barren and God gave her a promise. And Hagar was the one that could, uh, could, could uh, have children. And, and so God was saying prophetically, if you are barren, if you are in a place where you are lacking the belief and the faith to believe in the promise that God has made you, if you're not living to your full potential, if you know that God has called you for more, but you know you're not living in the more, God says, rejoice, 
those who are barren. Rejoice that you've not gone into labor because I'm about to do something great through you that is going to far surpass those around you that you believe are, are not barren, that you see their children, you see the fruit of their labor. God says, I'm going to do great, abundant, and beyond anything that you could ever imagine. And in and, 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 and a million years of writing down all of your requests for me, I'm about to birth something in the earth realm. God showed me this around Sukkot, that he was going to birth something in 2024. I, and I don't even care if you believe in 2024, but the reality is, is that we are in a new fiscal Gregorian Roman new year. And God says, I'm going to do something in your calendar year. I'm going to do something fantastic in my calendar year that, that uh, God says, but in your calendar year, I'm going to do something amazing. And so I don't know what that is, but I do know prophetically God says he's going to birth something. And that birthing is going to be a release of chains. Uh, I see a release of chains. There is a bondage that's happening in the church today. There is a slavery that's happening in the church today, and the church doesn't even know that it's in bondage. Matter of fact, it says right here in, in Galatians chapter 4, it says, For Hagar is in Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to Jerusalem, which now is in bondage with her children. What does that simply mean? In the Peshat level, it means that Abraham was given a promise. He was to trust God. He was to do Bible things in Bible ways. He was to walk in the truth. He was not to walk in bondage. Hagar represents the tradition of men. What is the tradition of men? The tradition of men is to do what we want to do to solve a problem to please God. So our desire is to please God, but we, we do it in our natural state of traditions of what our intellect and logic says that we should do. So Sarah says, hey, look, it's not working out. Our tradition, God's promise is not happening. I'm not pregnant. Our local cultural tradition is that you go into the maidservant and bring forth a male child, an heir to the throne, so to speak. So they did that. Sarah represents the truth of God's word, the purity of the law of God, the purity of the Torah. But the moment that Abraham went into Hagar, what happened? Out came bondage. The moment that we begin to do what we want to do, ladies and gentlemen, the moment that we begin to 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 hold back from God, the idols that are in our life, because that's exactly what God is saying right now. In my own personal life, God is, 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 is showing me that, that life is not always going to go the way that I want it to go. Uh, people are not always going to act the way that I want them to act. My, my family, my marriage, my children, like not everything is going to go my way. And God says, idolatry is the idea. The epitome of idolatry is the concept. Listen to what I'm about to say. The epitome of idolatry concept that things must go our way. And God says to me, Jim Staley, I want you to put aside the idea and the concept that things have to go your way. When someone hurts your feelings, things don't have to go your way. When, when this happens, things don't have to go your way. God says, I'm going to cause everything to not go your way until you recognize that I am the way. I'm going to remove to, from you everything that you consider truth until you realize that I am the truth. I am going to remove from you every road that you consider the way until you realize that I am the way. The truth. And I'm going to remove all life from your life until you realize that I am the life. See, God says, I'm not about teaching you the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, just for the truth's sake. God says, you're not understanding, you're not remembering. I am the truth. I am the way. I am the life. Life, truth, and the way is a person, says the Lord. And God says that when you go into your own way, it's like Abraham going into Hagar. It will produce bondage, period. It will shackle you. And here's the question. He says that Jerusalem in the first century, they knew, excuse me, that they were in bondage. But did they know it? No, they did. They had no idea that they were in bondage. Let me ask a question. Do you think the church at large today knows that they're in bondage? No. Let me ask you a question for those that are the Bible elite messianics who believe in the whole book, the, nothing but the book, so help us God. Do you believe that it's possible for us to be in bondage too? Because I believe that if I have to have ultimate 
intellectual honesty, I have to say it is absolutely possible that I can be in bondage. And this is where God is taking me right now in my own personal walk. Again, I have no idea what I'm about to say even now, and it kind of scares me. I wanted, to re -re I wanted to record this just to make sure I didn't say anything that was out of line. And God said, no, I want you to speak now, and I want you to speak live. And trust me, stop trying to be in control. So there's no graphics, there's no lower thirds, there's no intro, there's no music. This is raw word of God, letting God just speak. God says, it's time that you understand and recognize and humble yourself, says the Lord, that you might be in bondage in an area of your life. And you know what bondage is? We look at bondage as prison, and I've been there. I know what bondage is in real time. I know what it is to have shackles on your, on your hands and shackles around your waist and shackles around your legs. I know what it's like to be able to have to walk six kitchens at a time to get on Con Air, to be transferred to five different prisons in a week's time. I know what it's like to be in bondage in the physical realm, but how often a, a worse bondage is to be in bondage and not even know it. What if you're a child that's born into slavery? You've never known the free world. So hitting a rock with a hammer every single day for your life when you were born, you don't even know what it's like to play tic-tac-toe or to play a board game or to drink clean water. You don't even know the bondage that you're in. The Pharisees of the first century didn't know the bondage that they're in. We don't know the bondage that we're in because we don't know what we don't know. There's no mirrors in life. You, are, you, you don't see the egg on your own face. That's why God sent us spouses. That's why God sent us close friends. That's why he sent us the word of the living God. Did you know that the priests, when they went to the brazen laver, that wide open bowl, giant, huge pool of water, it was there so that when they looked into it, they would immediately see the reflection in polished brass. The word of God was symbolically inside of polished brass, which was the mirror of the day. And it was the water of that word, if you will, where they saw the dirt on their face and they would cleanse before they would walk into the holy place. And ultimately the high priest, when he would walk into the holy of holies. You see bondage, here's the real definition of bondage. Are you ready? The real definition of bondage is the restriction from your full potential. That's bondage. Now that restriction is greater for some than it is for others. That restriction is full on like a python around some people that are in, entrenched in deep sin and addiction, alcoholism, pornography, adultery, fornication, whatever it might be, arrogance, food, gluttony, whatever it might be. They're so entrenched, it's like a python. They can't move. And then there are those that are free in every area but one, and they're not going to let go of that, and they know they're not hitting their full potential. You see, last night at two something in the morning, I got off the phone with some friends of mine, and I began to go into prayer, and, I, and, I, and God began to remind me, this is really hard to say live, because of everything that I've gone through and all that I've tried to do for God, and God says, you're not giving me your best. You're holding back. The Father God, Holy Spirit, spoke to me last night and said, you have idolatry in your life. You're holding back. And I said, no, no, God, I'm not holding back. He says, what? you're holding back. You're holding back. When was the last time that you got up at 5 o'clock in the morning just to spend time with me because it's too hard, Jim? You're holding back. I believe that all of us are restricted. We're holding back from our full potential. We're not giving God everything that we've got. We're too comfortable. In 224, God says in 2024, he wants his people to be unshackled. He wants Egypt to be in the rear view mirror. He wants our petty differences to go away. He wants our petty doctrines to burn to the ground. That's right. God says, I'm not interested in you trying to figure out what the calendar is, what this is, what this is. You guys are, are trying to do calculus and you don't even know how to add or subtract. You're so confused on the smallest of things of what pleases me, says the Lord God, that you have forgotten the basics of the church of Philadelphia. Shall I remind you that you've left your first love, says the Lord? Shall you learn calculus and forget one plus one is two? 
God says you're restricted from your full potential. God says it's time for the, for the shackles to fall. It's time for my people to come out of Egypt. And it's time for me to birth something in the earth realm. And in order to actually bring something to birth, there must be a travail. There must be a labor. There must be an uncomfortability. There must be something that is left behind. And honestly, it's incredible to me after having six children and watching six children being born, three of them at home in my arms, that the very thing that's feeding them is what is left behind. The placenta, the umbilical cord, the very thing that is feeding that child for nine straight months, 40 weeks in the desert, if you will, in order for you to go into the promised land, in order for the baby to come forth and live on its own, the umbilical cord must be cut. The very lifeline that you are relying on, listen to me, Someone's going to watch this, maybe now live, maybe tomorrow, maybe years from now, and you've got something in your life that is feeding you that's not supposed to be feeding you. And God says, cut it. God says, it's time to grow up. You will always be a child in the spirit if you are being fed from the flesh. Let me say that again. You will always be a child in the spirit if you are being fed from the flesh. So God says, cut the foreskin of your heart and do it now. Destroy the umbilical cord that is pulling from the things of this world. Whatever's tripping you up, whatever is you have considered okay, whatever's in the dark, whatever's in that closet, whatever you have not confessed, whatever you are holding on to, whatever your idol is, God says, I will not in this year, I will not give my glory to another. I will not share it and I will not sit and see you pull a teraphim, an, a household idol, out of your pocket. I am not, no matter how small. Did you know that household idols were as small as the palm of your hand? And they carried around with them in their pockets. That's what we're doing, ladies and gentlemen. When we are going into Hagar, we're doing what we want to do. We worship the Lord God, and we're like Nadab and Abihu. We are bringing profane fire before the Lord because we refuse to stop the things that are offending him, that are profaning his name. We refuse to be holy as he is holy. We make excuses of why it's okay to curse. We, we watch this program and, and, and we, we, oh, it's okay, I'm an adult, I can watch that. God says, no, you do not understand holiness, says the Lord. You think, even for those of you that believe in the front of the book, you believe and you think that the ceremonial ritualistic laws have been done away with by principle, and that was for the Old Testament, and God says, you have no idea the multidimensional universe that I live in, that when my people who were called by my name, when I told them at the highest level, if you want to come before me, you better strip naked, you better take a bath, you better mikvah, immerse, and you better arise anew, and you better come before me ritually immersed, ceremonially clean, both physically and in the heart. And today, we've literally washed it all aside as if nothing matters. And I'm not saying that you need to go build a mikvah. I'm saying that we need to recognize we serve a holy God. And if we're going to come before him and we expect him to answer our prayers, listen, God says, how dare you come before me and request anything and yet hold back from me your best. At the, do you know tithing is the least it's the least of all the commandments. You know why? Because it's a physical thing that we do. It's a single shekel. Out of 10 shekels, God says, give me one. He doesn't even care where your heart's at. It's an obedience factor. It's the lowest level of reward in the kingdom is the one who is giving 10%. You know why? Because it's simple. It's just math. Now, I know some of us have a difficulty doing it because we want that all 10 shekels to ourselves. But the reality is God says, this isn't even about tithing. Tithing is the very beginning. See, if you can physically tithe, see, I told you I had no idea what I was going to say. God says, if you can physically tithe, then that means you're cutting the foreskin of what you want, of what's most important to you. And now you can actually give me the best in every area of your life. And I'm telling you right now, I know people that tithe and they give the best in every area of your life. And I just thought of that. I've never thought of that in my entire life. Guys, we're not giving our best to God in any area of our life. 
Maybe there's somebody out there who's more righteous than me. But I know I'm not giving my all. I know I'm not giving my best. I know I am leaving fruit in my tithe on the table. I know I'm doing it. And I, I am declaring right now, live on this program, this year is going to be different. I am going to give God every single thing I've got. And I don't care what it costs me. If it costs me my pride, if it costs me uh, uh, my reputation, if it costs me viewers, subscribers, I don't care. I want one single subscriber to my channel and I want it to be God himself. If I look on there and find out that God has subscribed to my channel, that's the only thing that I care about. I want God to say, I want to hear what this young man has to say. What is God wanting to hear from you? You know what he's wanting to hear? He's wanting to hear chains fall off and his people literally be willing to tithe everything. He wants the first of the best of the best. And you know what we're doing? We're bringing broken-legged sheep and mange goats and we're sacrificing them. And then we're grading ourselves on a curve. Oh, we're better than the person next to us. And guys, I know this is a hard message, but the Holy Spirit is so ready to pour out his blessing. He's so ready. He says, God, he, God says, I want to take you like wings of an eagle, eagle higher than the clouds can go. But you're not willing to open your wings because you're afraid that someone might see what you're hiding under them. God says, open your wings. Be shamed of your sin and your shame I will take away. But you cannot be ashamed of your sin until it's exposed. My friends, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Yeshua, Holy Spirit is imploring you. No more being barren. There's a promise that God has. He wants to bring forth a child. He wants to bring forth fruit from your life. And he says, I am going to judge and give rewards based on the investment return that you give him. God says in 2024, give me your best. Don't leave anything on the table. Put your idols aside. Put your petty ideas of what you think it means to minister to me. And God says, you know what? I don't even need you to minister to me, God says. He says, I want you to minister to your neighbor, minister to your spouse, minister to your children. And when you do so to the least of these, you'll be ministering to me on a level that you have not yet comprehended, says the Lord. So, Father, I come before you as we close out this short little broadcast. Maybe nobody will watch this. Maybe everybody will watch this. But, God, I pray that you would teach us obedience, that you would teach us, Father God, how to give our all, how to lay aside what easily besets us so that we can run the race to win, that in this now year, this fiscal Gregorian Roman year that means nothing in your calendar, but it means everything in this message, that, Father, that you would cause your people to immediately think right now, every single person that's listening to this, Father, I pray that you would reveal by the Holy Spirit of the living God instantly in their mind what is holding them back. What are they holding back? What is it? What's in the dark? What's in the secret place? What is under their wings that's causing their wings to be embarrassed, to hold them against the side? That husband that refuses to walk in the holiness and the godliness to lead his wife and his children at the highest level because he feels like he's a hypocrite and not worthy. Let him open his wings, God, and let him reveal what you can do when you put the, the, the wind beneath his wings. God, blow away all of our shame. Would you roll away the reproach? Let this be the prophetic moment of the Gilgal. Lord, I declare in the name of Yeshua the Messiah that we are now crossed the Jordan into the Gilgal. And that Gilgal literally means to roll away the reproach of Egypt. Roll it away, God. Let this be the year of the roll and roll again. Let this be the year of circumcision. Let this be the year of healing, God. Let this be the year of equipping the saints to do battle with Jericho. And let it be done in the spirit, says the Lord. Let we put down our sword and pick up the crown and put it on our heads, God, and walk by the Spirit. If we pick up any sword, let it be the sword of the Spirit, says the Lord. God, I pray that you would bring the Jericho walls down in our lives, and I pray, Father, that you would do such miraculous things that by the time that we even get to Passover, hundreds of thousands of people, God, 
will come into deeper covenant with you. They will put aside their petty nonsense, God, of wanting to do what they want to do in every area of their life. And they would literally, they would hold a ceremonial moment. God, you're showing me the word moment, that there is a moment that is needed where stones will be erected, a memorial will be lifted, where your, your people will say, it was on this day, it was on this moment that I put aside the deeds of the flesh and I picked up the spirit by faith. I can't do it in the flesh, but I can do it by faith. I can put down its addiction. Uh, I can't put this addiction down by, 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 this, by flesh, but I can put it down by the spirit. God, by the spirit, you will put to death the deeds of the flesh. And we call upon you, Lord, this day, that this year will be the year of release of your people. You release from your people from Egypt and slavery of their own minds. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for the most unbelievable year yet to come. And we give you full permission to build our house out of glass and tear down this house of straw. Build it out of the golden glass the clear, transparent glass of the floor of heaven. And I pray that you would shine so brightly through it that the nations would come and they would kneel before you and say, what is this great law that your people keep? Teach me how to merge the spirit and the truth. Let this be the year of transparency and combustion. Let the engines begin to rumble and may the plane that is carrying your people begin to taxi on the runway. Be the wind beneath our wings, Father, as we bow and we humble ourselves and we open our chest and say, God, free me from the idols of my own mind. In the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, and everyone said, all right, my friends, please, if this message touched you at all, would you share this immediately with everyone that you know? People need to hear this message. People need to know there's a promise out there and they don't want to meet themselves and what they could have been in heaven. I don't want God to introduce me to the Jim Staley I could have been. And I know there's a great gap between who I am now and who God desires me to be. None of us want to see that gap. Let's bridge the gap in 2024. Let's go into labor right now. Let's be the woman, the man of promise. Let's encounter God on a deeper level. Thanks guys for taking a few minutes out of your day to listen to this uh, word from the Lord. And I pray God blesses you uh, as you watch it again and let him speak to you again. A true word from the Lord. You will be able to go back and listen to it again and get something completely different out of it. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Guys, I, I, I heard this about four days ago or so. And I say, man, I got to share this message because it's been on my heart, the same thing. Um, I guess I've been standing in this little tiny apartment here a long time and and we've been saying how uncomfortable we are sometime here because I need a space where I can go in and and do fasting and prayer and you know more and be to myself more and talk to you guys on the phone if I need to in private or whatever. And so I remember when we, I, I, you know, many, many years ago I had all these houses and other relationships and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, I'm here in this little place. But you know, I thought about that. I said, but all the family I have and all the family my husband have, he probably wanted us to be in this little tiny place where we can start the ministry. And I told the father, I said, if I would have known I was going to be in doing ministry, I probably wouldn't have lived here. I wouldn't have came here. <laughs> but we have done so much, so many things here in this little tiny place. <laughs> Uh, for the ministry, for the uh, all over the world, I never would have thought I would have been doing any of it, guys. None of it. But um, it is important that we work on our life, get closer to the Lord right now. I was looking at some pictures I had just pulled up. 
And I'm going to get into my testimony here. But, you know, like I was telling you guys, I don't know where you live. I don't know what your mom and dad was like growing up. I don't know what your favorite food is. I don't know what your favorite drink is. I don't know anything about you, but our Heavenly Father know all's about you, all about you. And, you know, I don't know if you came out of a battered home. I know my grandmother raised me because my mom had me at 15 years old and, you know, in high school. And my grandmother took over and raised me. And I got seven years old. I went home to my mom. And my other brother came along. My baby brother came along to try to help her out with the baby brother. And, uh, and so, but, you know, a lot of kids today are back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. With all the divided uh, homes today, uh, you know, mothers and fathers breaking up, new husbands, new stepfathers, new stepmothers, and it's a lot of tension uh, in the world uh, when you have to go up and live between two environments, and some people on their own living by themselves, pretty much the kids today are raising themselves, you know, and we have uh, all the, like he mentioned, uh, Jim Staley, about all the drugs. The drugs are just taking over America, taking over the world. All over the world, the devil has gotten people addicted to heroin and dope and, uh, op, op, you know, all the little drugs, opiates and uh, fentanyls taken over. And we got crystal meth and we got all these people drinking and drugging and just into all the alcohol and you can name it. And then we want to know when people come to Jesus Christ for the first time, I know I came to Jesus Christ when I was 16, and uh, I, I had a crazy household going on all, all my life. And then, you know, uh, you got other people out there going through the same thing. I used to hear a pastor told me, many years ago I heard a pastor's testimony. Uh, he's a pastor now, I don't even know, I haven't heard from this guy in a long time. Uh, his first name was Harry. And he talked about how when he was growing up, he was into the Chicago. He worked, he was at a place called the Hell's Kitchen, Hell's Kitchen, uh, part of a gang, a gang he was a part of. And he used to go out and kill people day and night, go home, sleep like a baby, it didn't bother him at all. And he said one day he was out and an old lady came up to him and said, honey, don't you know God love you? Don't you know God love you? And every time I hear that now, tears come to my eye right now. Tears come to my eye every time I hear that. Uh, but he said, yeah, don't you know God love you, honey? Don't you know God love you? He said, nobody ever told me God loved me. Nobody ever told me God loved me. All I could hear was how bad I was, how, how uh, mean I was, how disappointed and embarrassing I was to my family. And he said, but this old lady told me God love you. And then she led me to Jesus Christ, and he went to one of the colleges over there in Alabama at Oakwood College and went in there, walked in the door, and told the people, by faith alone, God sent me here. And they paid for his tuition, and he enrolled into the Bible school there, and he became a pastor. And, you know, every time I hear that, I, I, I just, I, I know, I, I, I just, I hear, I feel it, I taste it. Out of all the things in the world that people have been going through in their life, how you grew up, uh, how dramatized you was, you might have been raped, you might have been attacked, you might have been uh, parents who didn't instruct you properly, abused. Uh, like I say, the kids today are raising themselves, uh, innocent, uh, innocent kids, naive, don't know what's going on in the world. Uh, and so when you go, and, and I know in my life when I became born again, Billy Graham, 16 years old, watching the TV channel, and, uh, and, you, and, you know, a lot of people come to Christ after they've been in trouble. You know, after they get in trouble, after they do things in trouble. But I had a little turnaround differently. I came to Christ 16, and then I didn't know nothing about the world out there much. And so I did a lot of crazy things I'm not proud of. I didn't get into drugs. I didn't get into alcohol. I didn't get into those things. But, you know, I got into wrong relationships, people, men in my life, you know, things like that. And so God came along, and I asked him this question. I asked him this question this week, you know, going through this marriage, going through that marriage, going through that marriage. Uh, and so, you know, I asked him this question, and he told me this, and I'm going to share it with you guys here now. Because, you know, a lot of us don't really understand who the king of king is, who the judge is. You know, like I say, you can go to the judge, go to the real judge, and talk to him about your life, and you can repent 
and you sometimes fall, and you get up again, you fall again, you fall again, you get up again, you fall again, you fall again, you get up again, you fall again, okay? Uh, whatever it may be, you know, whether it's adultery, whether it's fornication, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, whether it's something else, you know, drug, robbery, a lot of people in prison uh, today for things they did, robbing, stealing, whatever. But you know, God is the one that he is trying to tell you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And so he wants you to come to him and talk to him and be with him as Staley just said, okay? And so when I go over here and, um, and I look at this Bible verse he gave me, let me see here. He gave me this Bible verse the other night. I was asking the Lord, I mean, the pages just flipped over like that. You know, like wind just blew it over. And I say, oh my goodness. So he say, uh, yeah, go read that. And so he gave me 1 Peter 2, 1, at 1 Peter. And he didn't give me the whole thing. But I, I you know, let me see how many verses is here. It's 25 verses. And I think I'm just going to read down to the part what he showed me. Because this is a very important message here out of this 1 Peter. And, uh, and so I have an hour and 30 minutes I'm at already. That's why I didn't think I'll be able to show you. Uh, I'm not going to probably be able to show you... Uh, prophecy uh, with Stan and he had one talking about the deceptions and I definitely want to cover that later but I do want to put it in the description box later for you guys to look at but uh, let's get to the Bible right now father be with me as I go to the word you showed me uh, uh, the other night just two nights ago uh, you're such a wonderful God father and that's why we need to be having a real real born again experience in our life I know some people just go and dip their water in the dip their body in the water and they come out like a dead uh, come out like a wet fish and nothing has changed and nothing has been uh, done some people believe in once saved always saved it can't possibly be so because every time we fall and every time we get up and every time we fall and every time we get up if you have the life insurance policy that only Yeshua can give you it is so good to run to God every time you make a mistake. Every time you make a mistake, we should run to God, run to God, run to God. But when you don't have that covering, oh man, you might get into dope. You might get into uh, uh, other uh, better things than you've ever been into in your life. If you don't have that covering, you don't have that Holy Spirit living inside of you, it's so important that you let him change your DNA from Adam's seed to his seed, okay? I'm telling you, it's so important that he do it. So, Father, let's read, uh, let me go ahead and read this to the people. Uh, so important that this chapter here is so important that you gave me. Because uh, I asked you a question. I asked you a question, Father, and I will tell them about that here in a bit. Uh, a living stone and a holy people. You know, he just talked about being holy. God is a holy God. Okay. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies, and all evil speakings, like cursing, you know, like he mentioned, how many people just can't get it out of the, get it out of this, this cursing, gotta go, man. I, I'm getting to the point, I look at videos here. I look at, uh, one day I was looking at another video about a person, I, I really like hearing the uh, earthquake reports and, uh, and another guy, and, and I'm like, well, why, what's all this, you know? But it's true, we need to get away from all evil speakings. Uh, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow here thereby. So grow thereby. Grow. We have to grow. Like I said, when I got born again, I don't just get everything in front of me all at once. We have to go through things, you know, in life. God has to condition us and control and help us to come out of this flesh, to come out of this world, to come out of Egypt, okay? So that's why he say that whereby laying aside all malice, all gal and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that they may grow thereby. So if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, he is such a wonderful God. He understands you. He know what you've been through. He know what parents you had to raise you. He know that you didn't get it right the first time. But we like to beat up each other too much in this world. We need to start praying for one another, praying for your neighbor, praying for your mother, praying for your father, praying for the children, praying for the grandchildren, whatever. We know we have to grow up. We can't become a, 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 a powerful man of God overnight. And it's not going to happen. 
happen. Not going to happen. I sometimes hate all the stuff I had to go through. But as I go through these things, I become a better woman, a better woman of God, a better person, a better this. But you know, it's time for us to really know how God loves us. He loves us so much, guys. Don't let the devil beat you down. Don't let the devil tell you, oh, you're not going to make it. Oh, you're not going to ha have uh, uh, eternal life. Oh, you can't do it. You Look what you did. You look what you did. Look what you did. Tell him he has no future. Tell him he has no future. We, Yeshua told us to work out our own salvation. Work out our own salvation. Not your mom's salvation. Not your children's salvation. Not your dad's salvation. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Fear and trembling. And you know we have to do it. Die daily. Die daily. Repent daily. Repent daily. It's time for us to know that Yeshua about to come, guys. Are we going to be ready? Are we going to be ready? I asked the Father that question. I'm I'm going to show you what he told me. Oh, my goodness. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. He wants us to be holy as he is holy. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Sion a chief's cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which he believe, he is precious. But unto them which is disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. You know, we cannot be disobedient. We have to learn to follow his voice, to go by his voice. Sometimes people say, oh, well, the miracles. I know somebody was talking about the miracles in this country. With a lot of miracles going on all around you. Oh, my book is full of miracles. God is a living God. He is not a dead God. He wants to put miracles in your life, but do you want to give him any time? Do you want to take time? with him? Do you want to love him? Do you want to love on him? Do you want to read about him? Do you want to study about him? Do you want to take time to pray and talk to him and ask him questions? He will answer you if you go to him, people. Ask him questions. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient. Oh my goodness. Uh, where unto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation. You know, we are chosen guys. Chosen. Oh my goodness. Chosen. A royal priesthood and holy nation. A peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We should be so happy he called us out of the darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which has not ordained mercy, but now have attained mercy. Oh my goodness, attain mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, attain mercy. Abstain from fleshly lust, fleshly lust. And I, I can name a thousand of fleshly lust, but I won't get into it now, which war against the soul, you know, especially adultery, fornication, drugs, alcohol, all these things out there that's taking people out of the light into darkness. It's just people, the devil wants you to be into all these things. They think you're going to get a high, get high, get high, get high. Oh, you know, Yeshua, you should be getting high with Yeshua. Oh, getting the Holy Spirit to touch you, to be inside of you, to help you, to talk to you, to give you dream, visions, revelations. We should be wanting to be in his spirit, his spirit, his spirit alone, guys, not this other spirit, not the other spirit. I think I used to listen to a song called, uh, uh, Chicago. That song, oh, I can't think of it. Uh, Hotel California. Hotel California. And that lady sang the song about, oh, this spirit is not welcome here. That spirit is not welcome here. Uh, you know, we don't need to be into these bad spirits. We don't need to be a part of these bad spirits. And all the alcohol, drugs, and all these things are bad spirits. So we know having your conversation uh, honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may be, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. So we need to know it's time to really uh, pre please the Lord is what they're saying. Please the Lord. Uh, we don't need to be into evil, anything evil, anything evil. Okay. Submission to authority. Submit yourselves to every audience of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme uh, and to governors as unto th them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well, for so is the will of God, 
that with well-doing you sh may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. The ignorance of foolish men. Don't hang with foolish people. Don't hang with bad companies. Don't hang with bad crowds. As free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. We honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. He's telling us to love the men, love people, pray for people, love the brotherhood. Honor all men, fear God, and, and honor the king. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. That's why he said to pray for your enemies, pray for those that persecute you, say all men are evil against you. We need to be praying more than ever. Prayer is the most effective weapon we have. We need to be using it. I have to pray every day. We in this house three times a day, every day. People say once a week. I don't say that works, okay? You leave all those doors for the Satan to come in, the evil devils and evil angels to come in all week long. You're going to pray once a week? I don't think it matters. It, it doesn't work, guys. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So it says, servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. Always, we know we don't just have to go and pick out the good people. We need to be trying to talk to the bad people sometime, praying for them, leading them to salvation, leading them to Jesus Christ. For this is think worthy if a man for conscience towards God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if when you be buffeted for your faults, Ye shall take it patiently. You should take it patiently. It's a question. But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. Acceptable with God. We have to suffer with Yeshua. Suffer with him as he suffered. We have to suffer. Like the guy said, we want everything our way. Uh, uh, Jim Saylor was saying, you know, we think everything should be smooth and right. And, oh, we shouldn't be going through nothing bad. And then people have the nerve to say, well, oh, God must be not with you because you're going through so much. That's what people tell you. Oh, God must be not with you because you're going through so much. Well, you know what? We suffer with Yeshua. And he said all these things would happen. He told us these things would happen. And so here is what he told me when I asked him a question. Oh, my goodness. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, okay? And then I asked the Lord a question the other night. I said, Father, are you really, uh, you know, I, I went through a lot in my past. I went through a lot in my life. And I say, uh, what happened to me? I, I, you know, so he told me that. Here, let me go up here and find that. I'm, not, I'm passing over something. Uh, maybe it's not the right Bible text here. Let me see if I can go back to my Bible text here because I want the one he showed me. Um, okay, here it is. Yeah, 1 Peter 20. Uh, I will go to King James. Uh, amplified, amplified. 1 Peter 2.21. So he told me this, for even to this were you called, okay, I was called. Like I say, he, he's saying here now, everything's not going to be really, you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer, and I have suffered. Went through a lot of crazy relationships, suffered with my family, suffered with my father, suffered with a lot of people. Uh, and so he's telling me here, we're going to suffer. We're going to suffer. It's part of growing up, guys, okay? And then he said to me here, for even to this were you called, okay, you were called, we were called to go through things, called to suffer. We, we need to understand it's part of the plan. We need to be getting stronger and stronger. Our sufferings kind of make us stronger sometimes. Uh, for Christ also suffered for you. See, leaving you. He suffered for us. He suffered for us. For Christ also suffered for you, leaving you, example, so that you should follow in his footsteps. He was guilty of no sin. Neither was deceit, gall ever found on his lips. And he was a person that had no sin, and he suffered. The people beat him up. People did all kind of things on the cross. He died a horrible death, and you know he suffered. And he had—it's like a guy going to prison for thirty. I think I just heard the other day a guy was in prison for forty years for something he didn't do, and they're gonna give him what four million dollars or something now. I don't know, but I'm just telling you guys, we gonna suffer. We stop trying to figure it out. Stop trying to say that oh, uh, yeah, you know, he, he, they suffering all the time. So God must be not with them. God must be not with them. And then the devil come along and tell you, you're not going to make it to heaven because you're going to done this and you're going to done this and you're going to done that. I'm telling you, you need to be running to the Savior, running to the judge. Let the judge hear your story. Go take your story to the judge. 
Okay? And he will go through everything. He know your thoughts. He know what you've done. He know why you did it. He know your motives. He know everything about you guys. Everything. So don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Go to him and say, Father, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I've sinned so many years. I've sinned. And he probably know all about it. But he want to hear it from you. He want to hear it from you guys. So it says here, when he was reviled and insulted, he did not revile or offer insult in return. He was abused and suffered. He made no threats, but he trusted to him who judges fairly. He personally bore our sins. Listen to that. He personally, you know what that means? Personally, each one of us. Each one of us have the opportunity to come into his kingdom. He personally bore our sins and his own body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. He told me, Marner, I healed you. I delivered you. It's time for you to know that Yeshua have given you the opportunity to be born again, to be in his kingdom. And he wants to heal you. He wants to save you. He have mighty, mighty grace and wonderful, wonderful goodness. He's a good God, good God, good God. Absolutely good. And you need to run to him and not run to your girlfriends, your boyfriends, your mother, your father, your, uh, all the people you gossip with and telling all your business with them. You need to go to the father and let him work with you. He's the only one can change you. Nobody else can do nothing for you but him. So you need, it's time for you to do it. As Jim Staley was saying, made a very powerful, powerful uh, uh, revelation I just read to you guys. I'm telling you, oh, he just read to you, not me. But, uh, you know, we need to know. It's time. It's time to stop hiding behind a fence. It's stop trying to hide things. All your little secret sins. All, your, all the things you think God don't know about. He knows it. He sees it. He wants you to confess it. For those who confess their sins, confess their sins, I am faithful. He's faithful to forgive you from all unrighteousness. He will do it, but you got to go and talk to him. You know, one day I took a sheet of paper and I wrote down, I was thinking about all the things I've done wrong in my life. And this was after I've been born again. <laughs> I'm thinking about all the things I've done and I give it to the father, say, father, here it is. I've done all these things. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Uh, help me to be stronger, stronger, stronger. And you know, you need to do that. Write a piece of paper, go write it down and say, father, here, I'm talking to you. This is what I've done. Uh, straighten me out. Uh, take it away from me. Uh, uh, just help me repent, father. I want to repent before you. And you know, you need to do that today because time is running out. Time is running out. For here it says, for you were going astray. See, look at there. He told me that you were going astray. So, you know, like I heard somebody said the other day that um, God have a grace period, you know, a grace period. If you, if you do too many sins in your life without repenting, you can end up going to hell or you can end up uh, being into some places you don't want to be. Uh, you can end up being, oh, you know, a whole long story of things you could be in, a part of. If you don't go to Yeshua and repent, repent, repent. That's why we must do it daily. We should die daily, guys. Die daily, okay? And so here it says, Marner, he was talking to me. I asked him this question. He bore my sins. He, hid, he, hid, he cleansed me. He helped me. He healed me. Healing me all the time from all kind of things. And then he says here, For you were gone astray like sheep, but now you have come back to the shepherd and guardian, the bishop of, the bishop of your souls. He is a guardian over us. You know, he is a guardian. He is a shepherd. And I'm just saying, wow, God, I never would have thought of that if you wouldn't have showed it to me. But this is what he's telling you today, that he want you so bad. He wants you so bad in his life. He don't, he know you're going to make mistakes. I've done mistakes. I've done all kind of crazy things. He don't care. He wants you to confess it. He wants you to confess it where he can clean you up, get you right before the trumpet sound. So I'm going to go ahead and end now, guys. I hope you got something out of that whole, uh, all these people preaching today here. Uh, there's so many things are going on. We need to get ready, get ready, get ready. Uh, and so I'm going to go on over here now and get into Maranatha real quick and let you guys go. Uh, well, wait, I got to show my, let me go here. I don't want to forget my missionaries. Uh, let me go here and get into a powerful... Um, missionary uh, uh, video here and then we'll close out uh, I will go on over and close out with Maranatha let me go ahead and mute out uh, this here in the corner 
corners of my mind Still you call me to walk on the edge of this world To spread my dreams and fly But the future's so far, my heart is so free you love me anyway I am the nail in your wrist but you love me anyway I am Judas Escaz but you love me anyway see now I am the man who yelled out from the crowd December 23, our study in ages to come, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus, Ephesians 2, 7. The science of redemption is the science of all sciences, the science that is the study of the angels and of all the intelligences of the unfallen worlds, the science that engages the attention of our Lord and Savior, the science that enters into the purpose brooded in the mind of the infinite, kept in silence through times eternal, the science that will be the study of God's redeemed through the endless ages, this is the highest study in which it is possible for man to engage. As no other study can, it will quicken the mind and uplift the soul. The theme of redemption is one that angels desire to look into. It will be the science and the song of the redeemed throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. Is it not worthy of careful thought and study now? The study of the incarnation of Christ, his atoning sacrifice and mediatorial work will employ the mind of the diligent student as long as time shall last. And looking to heaven with its unnumbered years, he will exclaim, Great is the mystery of godliness. In eternity we shall learn that which, had we received the enlightenment that it was possible to obtain here, would have opened our understanding. The themes of redemption will employ the hearts and minds and tongues of the redeemed through the everlasting ages. They will understand the truths which Christ longed to open to his disciples, 
but which they did not have faith to grasp. Forever and forever new views of the perfection and glory of Christ will appear. Through endless ages the faithful householder will bring forth from his treasures things new and old. If it were possible for us to attain to a full understanding of God and his truth, there would be for us no further discovery of truth, no greater knowledge, no further development. Thank God it is not so, since God is infinite and in him are all the treasures of wisdom. We may to all eternity be ever searching, ever learning, yet never exhaust the riches of his wisdom, his goodness, and his power. Hallelujah. It's God all by himself, guys. He's the judge. He's going to make the final decision about your life. And he's trying to give you time to come to him. If you got breath to breathe, you need to be repentant. You need to get into his, his uh, arms and, and, like I say, give your best. As uh, Jim Staley said, we should be giving our best. I know I'm not giving my best. I would love to have a bigger place where I can have many people over, home church, homestead, whatever. Uh, but, you yes, know, uh, I trust in the Lord to do all things. He has done so many mighty things already for me. So we're going to go ahead and close out. I'm going to close out. I think I like this picture here. I saw it. I like that uh, blue uh, cross of the blue there. But we're going to go ahead and close out. Uh, I really hope you got something out of this today, guys. The world is turning around every day. We said 9-11, I don't know, 1-11 a day, 1-11. People were saying something coming. Some people saying the rapture could come. I don't know. I don't know. Whenever the God want to come, he'll come. He is, he, he even uh, Jesus said he the only one know. The Father only one knows. Uh, so we're going to have all kind of things going on. Things arise and tensions, earthquakes. Uh, war is uh, really taking off in Israel. A lot of things going on. Uh, eclipses and you know we're going to continue having all these things till Yeshua come so it's time for us to truly truly say I to say to the Lord whoever believes he has you can you can have eternal life if you believe in him so I'm going to go ahead and close out with a short prayer I really pray uh, that you guys continue to keep looking for the homeless in your area especially as winter is drawing nigh our winter is here uh, uh, to help them whenever they need a little help with food water blankets and whatever well, I might be getting some blankets here in a bit uh, to have in a car and some things and food cards and things like that we use with the offerings coming in uh, we really appreciate each and every one of you for protect participating in that so we're gonna go ahead and let me close on out here now uh, father thank you so much for your love for us your care for us we ask that your blessings will always be with us uh, father we know you are coming soon be with all the people watching uh, supply all the people needs according to your riches and glory, whether it's physical, mentally, spiritually. And we really appreciate all you do for all your people around the world, uh, all your people doing missionary work, all the people out there protecting them from all harm and danger. And we just love you, so, Father, so much for everything you have done uh, for this bit, for this channel, uh, for the ministry, uh, Feed My Sheep Today, all these things, all the ministries around the world. Uh, so I bind Satan and all his evil angels below, beyond, beneath, mentioned and unmentioned, known and unknown. I bind our evil spirits on assignment against each and every one of us. Uh, we ask that your Holy Spirit will come and be with your people today, and we ask it in Jesus' name. I know I haven't got my declaimer, my thing here, closing out here quick. So uh, if you guys uh, want to share the videos, I would really appreciate that. Uh, buy the ebook. Uh, he did what from Amazon, all these places on the screen. I just talked them over. Went over it, my voice about to give out here. So anyway, uh, be with uh, all these things here. Uh, you can go and buy uh, the ebook, uh, ISBN number there, and also the other Son of Man Bible. Download Gene's free e Bible from Lulu.com, Kobo, all the right locations there, same locations as the uh, ebook is on. Uh, read the Son of Man Bible PDF for free. Download the Son of Man Bible computer Bible modules for free. Download free at biblesupport.com and word modulars. Uh, King James Version Bible. Download for Gene's free Son of the Version, uh, King James Version, uh, all from the same locations. One modular is SOTV KJV. One has the Apocrypha, SOTV KJVA. And also, we really want to thank you guys for all your offerings to help the homeless, the orphans, the widows, those that need a mission fields for Yahuwah, which will bless each and every one of you. FMCMI Alternative Channel, Rumble, BitChute, and Lee Rumble and BitChute. A lot of people looking at those ch uh, channels now. 
uh, social media sites, uh, Facebook and also fmcmi.org. Uh, also uh, donate by Cash App, our uh, Cash App on the screen and also other donation options, uh, fmcmi.org, marner.campbell at gmail.com at PayPal. Mailing your donations to Fill My Cup Ministries, Post Office Box 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81215. Shipping address, Fill My Cup Ministries, 1501 Main Street, number 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81212. Uh, click subscribe to like bell, subscribe to the YouTube channel, click the like button, click the notification bell. I never talk so fast in my life. Our digital business cards on the screen and also our hashtags. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go because time has just gone away from me today. But I really hope you will share the video uh, with anybody you can think of to share it with. And we're going to go now. And I love you guys so much. I thank you for all you have, what you're doing. Uh, get involved with Yeshua. Go to him. Repent. Every day, repent until the trumpet sound. Get ready. Be holy as he is holy. It's time is really running out, guys. So I'm going to go now. I love you guys so much. I'm going to say shalom, shalom. I love you guys so much. Shalom, shalom.